Hey crafty people, I'm Sarah, also known as Craft Nerd because I'm a nerd who loves to craft. Over the years I've dabbled in most types of crafting, although for the past decade or so I've been doing primarily card making and mixed media art. I've recently embarked on a junk journaling journey that I hope you'll join me on. Today we're going to start work on a trio of fall junk journals. And we're going to start at the beginning by creating the junk journal covers using stuff most people would consider trash or hopefully at the very least recyclables. We're going to use a waffle box, a biscotti box, and an Amazon uh, paper mailer to create our junk journal covers. Let's get crafting! So the first trash to treasure junk journal cover we're going to make is uh, I'm using a waffle box. So I'm just gonna show you what I'm gonna do to get this ready to become a junk journal cover. And what I really wanna do is have it go this way so that we're gonna have, it's gonna be short and long. Um, so that's what I'm doing with this guy. I thought this would make an interesting journal shape. I don't know that I've seen anyone do a journal this in this shape. That's not to say no one's done it, just that I haven't seen one like this yet. So I thought it'd be interesting to try. So I'm just cutting out the sides. And I'm realizing what I need to do before I finish cutting it out completely is probably, actually, you know, we're just gonna cut it out. And the reason I'm not just you know, tearing down the center of it is because I want to be able to use these pieces. So, all right. So what ended up happening is this came off and I want to glue this part back on. And that's because this section is going to need some reinforcing because it's going to serve as our spine. Um, so I'm just going to glue this part back on and we're actually going to add another piece probably from the sides uh, to the spine once we're done cutting everything down. So I'm just gluing this bag down because it came loose or trying to anyway. I have a feeling my glue dried in the interim so what I'm gonna do is let's cut this strip off and on my own camera this is this is definitely gonna be a little fiddly there we go so that's cut off that piece is kind of glued down before I cut out the other side I'm gonna glue this flap down so that we don't have the same problem And so we're just gonna do the same thing again. And then we'll cut this part off. And then we're gonna trim these flaps off. and that one and then I'm gonna grab my paper trimmer and we're just going to smooth out our edges and I think I'm probably gonna flatten it like that and see if this is thin enough to go through my Tim Holtz um, media trimmer What I'm gonna do here first is, let's see, is I'm gonna stick it in and I am gonna get it as straight as possible and just sliver a little off so that it will now fit in under here. And I am just gonna take a sliver off to get my edges clean. All right, 
I did not do a very good job with that. Let's try that again. Let's see if I can see it better if I do it this way. All right, that is not, not catching that at all. All right, let's try the other side and see if that'll work. side I got a nice clean cut on so now let's flip it over and see if we can get this to a nice clean cut I'm gonna line it up I think that might help no it ah there we go there we go okay I'm just gonna trim that little bit Okay, now we're gonna cut a little off that end. Let's see, let's figure out how. Long this section is so we can measure to make sure we sliver it off. All right, it is nine and a quarter inches. Let's pull out the arm, trim this down. And so what I'm doing is lining up the end of this piece, can you see? Um, at the nine and the quarter mark and just slivering a bit off so that our journal cover is even. Okay, now for my spine, I really want it reinforced and using the piece that we cut off will be the same width. So I'm just gonna mark where to cut. Gonna take a pair of scissors. Cut that, kind of clean up my sides a little bit. Try and clean up my sides a little bit. And then I'm just gonna glue that down on the outside here just to reinforce my spine a little bit more. Cut it a little bit along, but that's okay because we can just trim that off. All right, so if you're wondering, and I'm gonna need more glow in there. This journal is going to end up being, it's about nine and a quarter by four and a half and our spine is a little over three inches wide and we're definitely gonna do some creative things with our digital papers for putting that in the journal um, but let's start by decorating our journal cover and what I'm gonna do for this is I am going to collage the front with some antique book pages and some antique ledger I have and I am gonna use Liquitex matte medium because that's what I like to collage with and this is one of those silicone makeup spatula things I got off of Amazon and I'm gonna use that to apply the glue and I'm just gonna tear off pieces of paper and 
and attach them down. Probably should. I want to have a nice corner, so I'm going a little bit above and a little bit over so that I can wrap it around so that I can have nice covered corners. And then I just apply a coat on top. Make sure everything's down nice. I'm just gonna tear off a little bit of the, you know, plain bits. And then what I'm gonna do is flip it over come along here and just add glue along here and wrap the papers over and glue them down. And for the corner, I'm gonna Clip a little bit of it away, so it should miter the corner nicely. And am I even on screen? No, I'm not. Okay, so I just clipped a little bit of the corner away. And I'm gonna wrap this around. And this paper's a little on the brittle side, but that's okay. Once we add matte medium to it, it will help strengthen that. Just gonna add glue there. Wrap this around, that around, add a little on top, to make sure everything's glued down well. So that's, that's the basic process. I am going to go ahead and do the entire thing. I don't know that you need to see me do all of it on screen. I suspect that would get rather boring for you. One tip I am gonna give you when you get to where our um, spine is gonna be. So when you put pieces across the spine, don't bend your spine pieces while your paper is still wet. It's more likely to crack if you do that. I notice if I wait until it's dry, I have less of an issue with it cracking at the bend in the spine when I do something like this for a cover. So I'm gonna suggest to you that you just keep it flat until you're done and it's dried and <clears throat> leave it sit overnight even um, and just leave it alone and it'll be fine. Um, and you'll have less of a cracking problem. So that's what I'm gonna suggest for along the spine area if you're crafting along with me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go around and add paper all over this and cover it completely and then I'll be back because again, I don't think you need to see me just gluing pieces of paper down to a waffle box. So my uh, waffle box is all dry and I did actually end up getting cracking along uh, the edges here. I suspect this is because I am using um, antique book page. So we'll just put some fabric or ribbon or something over that when the time comes. And I did the inside as well. Um, so now what I wanna do to add a little bit more interest to this is I am gonna stencil and this is uh, Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous stencil. It's THS034 and I'm grabbing Spice Marmalade Distress Ink and a blending brush and I'm just gonna add a little bit 
of interest to this background by stenciling on this floral pattern. Now I am going to give you a little bit of a heads up as to what my plans are because I am going to be working on the three fall journals at once. Um, and this was a little bit inspired by uh, Gal Gustinelli recently did a, like she worked on four journals at once. And I was like, you know, I've got so much fall ideas and so many fall journals I want to get working on. There aren't enough hours in the day. I should probably do them all at once and together. So that is what I'm planning on doing. And I'm also hoping, fingers crossed, that I will be able to get my stuff together and post three times a week instead of two. Although lately it's been more like one. <laughs> oh. Conference took a lot of time and energy. And so I'm hoping now that it's um, finished, I will have more time to spend working on creative stuff because I have so many ideas and there's so much stuff I want to do and I'd kind of like to finish the fall journals before fall's over. So my plan will be to do two videos a week working on the trio of fall journals that I'm going to be working on and one video a week that's a different project, a non-junk journal project, because I've got a few mixed media projects in my brain that I want to work on for um, fall and Halloween, and I've got some card ideas that I want to make, so <clears throat> that is what my plan is. I'm hoping to uh, execute over the next month or so and we'll see how that goes and whether or not that will continue um it's going to depend a lot on how well it goes and how well i can keep up with it um because in, in case you're new and you haven't heard and are not aware i work full time and do this as a hobby in my spare time and because I have puppy dogs who are noisy, <laughs> I have to edit my videos <laughs> because there's always barking. Um, all right, so there we go. That is um, our cover for now. We're definitely gonna need to put something along here and here. Um, trying to decide if I want to stencil on the inside kind of do and I kind of want to do it in a different color. All right, I think, and I'm going to go in a different direction with the stencil. I am going to grab, and you'll notice I'm not bothering to clean the stencil because I don't mind if these blend together and I'm just grabbing aged mahogany and I'm going to just stencil on the inside and I'm going to do that with aged mahogany. All right, uh, so there we go. That's all stenciled. Um, and I think we're gonna set this aside and work on our next journal cover. So we're gonna make our next um, junk journal cover out of a biscotti box, um, which you may be able to see. Now, I just did a quick coat of distress paint in um, vintage photo because the technique I'm going to do to cover this, um, everything doesn't always line up perfectly. So you might see a little bit of what's underneath. And so I wanted to start with kind of a base coat. Um, we're going to prep this box similar to how we did the waffle box. We're going to cut up the side here. Then 
Then I am gonna grab my paper trimmer. And for this one, I am using my uh, Tim Holtz Media Rotary Trimmer. And I'm gonna stick this in and just line it up along the edge. Take a sliver more off of there. And then we're gonna do a sliver off on this side, just to even it up. did not sliver so well. Um, so what we're going to do is trim down our top. And trim down our bottom. this again just to sliver off a little bit on the side there there we go so that should hopefully be nice and even looks about right maybe not perfectly even this is measuring There we go, and I'm just gonna take my scissors and trim off those scrappy bits. So that should be a little straighter. There we go. So that's our base. And what we're gonna do to cover this is hexagons. If you saw my video where I made cards and tags with the hexagon background, um, we're pretty much going to do the same technique for this. Oh, let's find our center. So we are about... Where am I? Pretty long ruler. So this is not quite 14 inches, so we're going to go... Seven's close enough to center. And for... Uh, a little over six, so we're gonna go three. So there's about our center on the piece. Um, so I've actually already done a journal color with the fall printables that I wanted to use, and I believe this is a Leanna Scraps printable. I will um, put the name on the screen for sure and leave a link to it down below. Um, and. I didn't print out and die cut enough of these to do a second one, and I did this before I decided I wanted to do this as part of my trio of journals. So I am actually, because I went a little overboard, die cutting Christmas <laughs> hexagons, um, going to do a Christmas one because I just want to show you how um, to put this together. So I'm going to show you how to get started and then how to do the edges using the Christmas printables. And I'm using Liquitex Matte Medium and a little silicone brush. And I'm going to start with our centerpiece and I'm just going to lay that down in the center. 
put a coat over top. Then grab another piece. Go down below, line those up, and then I can put a piece into that space. And I'm just going to keep adding pieces until I've got the whole thing covered. Um, and I will go along and just apply pieces all across this until it's completely covered. And when I get to like a piece here, I'm going to just add, let's see. And I'm just going to leave the overhang like that for now. And when I get done, I'll come back and show you how I'm going to handle all of those overhangs. But you get the idea. And this is one of those things, use whatever glue you like. I'm using printables, but you, of course, could use um, pattern paper, scrapbook paper, plain hexagons. Um, and I use the Tim Holtz stacked tile die for my hexagons, but you could of course use a hexagon punch if you have a hexagon punch. So I'm gonna go along and just cover this whole thing and I'll be back when I'm done doing that. Okay, so I finished covering it except a few spots down here and I kind of got a little off kilter. I don't know if you can see the gaps over here on this side, but having painted it brown, it's less noticeable than if I hadn't have done that. Um, for the little bits down here, I'm going to use our glitter glue instead of the Liquitex matte medium, because it's just going to be easier to get things to stick given what a small bit of paper I need to stick on over here. So I'm just going to Go ahead and do those. I'm also going to use my glue to stick down anywhere that isn't quite stuck down all the way, like up here on the top. Just going to use the art glitter glue. Make sure everything's stuck down well. And then what I am going to do with this one is we're going to wrap. So instead of trimming off, we're going to wrap everything around. And I think to make my life easier, I'm just going to use our glitter glue. I might end up trimming off because I don't know that that's going to stick. We'll see what happens with this guy. Am I even on screen? Yes, I am. Okay.
All right, so that's what the cover looks like all done. And I'll be honest, I, I thought I had done the wraparound on this one, but apparently I did not. Um, so I think I like the wraparound a little bit better because it does then give you mostly a finished edge, except in the couple spots where we didn't end up wrapping around because of how it ended up laying out. So now I need to do something on the inside. And what I am gonna do, and this is gonna be my front, and this is the back, is I pulled out some of my coffee dyed papers. Um, and I do have a video on how I created these style of coffee dyed papers. I'll link that down below. And I am going to use for this just art glitter glue to attach it down to cover the inside. I'm just being careful to get it as close to the edge as I can. And we're gonna trim off the excess after we attach it down. I figured that would be easier than trying to trim it down beforehand. I'm just smoothing it out, making sure it's attached good. I'm gonna come in and add more glue and finish attaching it. Now I'm gonna trim it off over here because I want this piece to cover basically the back section, but I wanted a piece going over my um, hinges on the front and the back. puckering going on over here, but not too bad. A little over here, but that's going to get covered. So we're going to trim this off. going to grab my bone folder just to press our corners down on the hinge and see so, yeah we've got a little bit of bubbling over here that I think what I'm gonna do is real quick put a little slit in the paper And that will let me add some glue back in underneath and flatten that out. So that eliminates that little bubble. And I'm just going to add a little bit more glue underneath here just to make sure this is all glued down before we add the piece for the back. And I'm going to fold this up so I know where I'm attaching. And I'm going to add glue. All right, and then we're gonna trim everything off. 
all of the excess off. All right, so I'm gonna grab my scissors and just trim along the edges. Now I'm just gonna go around and double check and see if there's any spots like over here where we need to add some more glue. And I'm gonna do that. Make sure everything's glued down well. All right, so that's our second Trash to Treasure cover. Uh, so our last Trash to Treasure uh, junk journal cover is uh, gonna be an Amazon paper mailer. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim it down because it's a little bit bigger than I need. Um, and I was watching Galaga Stinelli make some junk journal covers and she was just doing one layer so I thought I might do that so I've like ripped it the bag open um but I don't know I like it a little bit thicker so I think I'm still gonna do two layers but if you watched my video of the pink floral junk journal you know I had an issue with like Amazon prime labels showing through my fabric but ripping it open I can flip it around so that the labeling's all on the inside. Um, so that should make life a little bit easier when we go to cover this with fabric. And so I'm gonna pull out my paper trimmer and trim this down because it is definitely um, too long. And I'm using my Fiskar paper trimmer because the measurement goes out to 14 and I wanna trim this down to 13 inches. See how well this cuts. I have a feeling it's not going to be very happy with this plant. Actually, that didn't do too bad. Um, but I think we're we're going to switch trimmers because. I want to trim down these sides, but they don't really, like the trimmer's not big enough for that. So what I'm gonna do is fold it in half and put it in. And we want to trim this down to six inches. And right now it's about 12, really. All right, had a brain freeze there math wise. This needs to be trimmed down to nine inches. And so we're gonna take a little off the top and a little off the bottom. And my media rotary trimmer should go through all of these layers. Let's see. And it did. And so we're gonna flip it around. So that's gonna give me a six by nine cover. And we're gonna cover this with fabric. And for the outside, I've got some orange fabric now. It started out this bright orange, and I was like, that's a little too orange, and so I coffee dyed it. And so now this is the color. 
And that's what we're going to use on the outside. And I need to go let some dogs out. All right, we're going to start by trimming down the paper, out uh, of the paper, the fabric, because I cut it a bit bigger than I needed. This way I have plenty to work with and I wouldn't have to worry about having to dye more. All right, so we've got that piece. And we're probably going to want to trim down a little this way because we definitely got more going this way than we need to. Okay, I'm going to set my paper bag aside because what I want to do on my cover is stamp. So I have grabbed, it's a Stampendous flower stamp. I think we can use the Misty for doing this because the fabric will just flow over the sides. Because it's a thicker stamp, I'm gonna do that. That should have this pretty much centered in the front of the cover. And we're gonna go ahead and stamp. And I am gonna grab archival um, acid-free ground espresso and did I say this is a Stampenda stamp? If not, it's a Stampenda stamp. And it's very old. I've had it for many, many moons. So we're gonna shift over. We're gonna ink her up. And stamp. Sorry about the glare. Well, we got the outer edges, but not the middle. So we're definitely gonna need to stamp this again. Glad I grabbed my Misty. We're going to stamp one more time. Really pressing down so that hopefully, yep, I think we're going to go with that as being good enough. Now we're going to repeat the pattern of the flower so that it looks like it's not just the centerpiece of it. It looks like it's a pattern on the fabric. Um, add some cardstock underneath so that I don't get ink on my Misty. And we're just gonna stamp it a couple more times. Okay, let's take a look at this. I feel like I need a little bit off here and a little bit going off that side just to make it look more like 
This was intentional. All right, so here's our fabric for the cover. Now, before I attach it to the packaging, I am gonna do a little stitching on the centermost flower um, to just add a little bit more interest to it. So I'll be right back. So what I wanna do is for like the center area is I'm gonna use some brown floss Oh, this is embroidery, embroidery floss, and it's left over from a kit of some kind. I have, over the years, done a variety of felt kits and cross-stitch kits, and so I have a lot of random leftover thread. Um, I'm going to go three-ply for this. So, if you are unfamiliar with embroidery floss, it usually comes in lengths with six threads um, to a length, and I'm going to separate this out. And honestly, this is way too long to work with. So I'm going to also cut it in half. And I've threaded my needle and I'm gonna just put uh, a couple knots in the back. And what I'm gonna do for the center is I just wanna do some French knots. So, I'm gonna bring my needle up through the center, take the thread, wrap it around. Now I think the French knot's supposed to be twice. I find I like it better wrapped three times around and go back down pretty much in the same spot. And now I'm gonna pull on this length of the thread to keep the thread that's wrapped around the needle um, taut and then pull my needle through. And there you go, that is a French knot. And so I'm just gonna do a bunch of those in the center. So I'll show you one more time. Bring your needle up through the fabric, wrap the thread around the needle two to three times, go back down pretty much in the same spot, pull it taut around the needle, and pull your needle through. And so I am just gonna do a whole bunch of French knots for the center of this flower. Um, and then what I also think I'm going to do is take some yellow thread and I'm sorry, I have no idea what thread number this is. It was probably one I bought at um, the store as opposed to leftover, um, but I apparently didn't keep the packaging for it, so I have no idea. Again, I'm gonna separate out into three strands. And because it makes life easier, I'm just gonna put a knot in the back or in the bottom of this. And Thread my needle and let's keep that out of the way. And what I'm basically going to do is outline the petals of the flower. So I'm gonna come up on one of the petals, 
and do straight stitch, back stitch. I can never remember the difference between the two. I think this is gonna be a back stitch. Gonna go down, then gonna come back up a little ways along. And pretty much just go around the petals like that. So these are just some basic embroidery stitches that you can use to add a little bit more interest to a project like this. So I am gonna finish stitching this whole thing and I will be back. So I have finished stitching the flower on the front cover. And so here's what it looks like close up. So we've got French knots for the center and then just straight stitches all around for the flowers. And I kind of made stuff up as I went along because this didn't fully stamp, but I like how it turned out. Now what we're going to do is we are going to take our Amazon mailer. So now I'm going to take this and cut it down the center. And the reason I'm doing that is so I can attach the fabric for the front piece so I'm going to take this piece and set the other piece aside for now I am going to put some fabric tack in the middle of this and glue this on and then wrap the edges around and just use a little glue to hold that in place. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with some other fabric for the inside, and I haven't decided yet what fabric I'm using for that. So let's start with this. I'm just gonna grab my fabric tack, and I'm also gonna grab one of my silicone spatulas. I'm just gonna go ahead and, the dang glue would come out. is not wanting to do. I'm having such issues with glue lately. I suspect it's something to do with the heat. Okay, so the top of my bottle was thoroughly gunked and I had to um, take care of that. And when I took it off to clean it, I had glue oozing out of it. So I just went ahead and attached it down with just a little bit, well, a lot of bit of glue <laughs> in the center, uh, not so much along the edges. Now what I'm going to do is take some glue, now that I've degunked the bottle, it should work a lot better. Um, unfortunately, I was rushing to get it on, I don't know that I got it on all that straight, but that's okay. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is glue down, let's pull off those threads, the top edge. Actually, what I'm going to do so that I actually get the spot I need is put the glue on the fabric. Yeah, now it's actually coming out of the bottle. And just use my little spatula to thin that out so that I don't have any big globs of glue showing. Not that it really matters because it's going to be covered up anyway. When I put, because what I'm going to do is I'll wrap the other piece and attach it like this and then sew the two pieces together. To create the cover. So I got the top. I'm going to do the same with the bottom. I swear it is so stinking hot that the glue is like drying like immediately in the bottle. Like I've got to cap things the second I'm done using it. Even if I'm getting ready to use it again in two seconds. Blame Florida weather. All right, let me grab my scissors. There they are. Because we don't need all of that bulk at the corner. 
So we're going to cut a little bit there and a little off there. Do the same on all four corners. So I'm just going to cut, turn, snip. And now I'll glue the sides down. I'm just Make sure my corners are good. This one needs a little more trimmed off. A little more glue over here. So there we go. That's the top part of our cover. Um, and I am going to add, figure out what fabric I want to put on the inside part and do basically the same thing. And then stitch them together. All right, so what I decided to do was take the rest of the orange fabric that I coffee dyed and use it to cover the inside. Um, but it's a little too short. This was, is, I didn't quite cut the original piece of orange fabric out big enough to do uh, both sides. But what I think I'm gonna do to address that is, so I'm just gonna make a pocket at the bottom using this ribbon that I picked up at Joann's. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. And it's a wired ribbon, so you can see the wire sticking out. But to take the wire out, it's really easy. You just grab and pull. So, and if it's not quite sticking out, usually you can scrunch it to get it to poke out, and then you can just grab it and pull it out. So I am going to pretty much do the same thing for the top half that I did for the front piece. And I don't know if you see a bunch of scratches on my arms. <laughs> My dog had his annual visit at the vet today and he uh, does not like going to the vet. It gets very stressed out while we are there and has to climb all over me um, and then can't sit still. Like it's one thing if he would just sit in my lap, that would be fine. But no, he's got to get in my lap and prance, prance around on my lap. So it's always lots of fun when we go to the vet's office because I always end up covered in scratches from him climbing all over me. And I just unclogged this bottle and I swear it is clogged again. I am blaming Florida's weather. I think it's the heat is making it like dry in the nozzle instead of like going back down into the bottle. It's like drying in the nozzle. It's driving me crazy. Like, I've been having problems with all of my glues, it seems like. Like, my art glitter glue is perpetually clogged these days. And I really do think it's a product of all of the heat here in Florida. So, 
So yeah, fortunately I'm not relying on this to keep everything in place. I'm going to be taking this to my sewing machine after um, I get this glued on. All right, so I'm going to come back in and add a little bit more glue at the very bottom to keep the bottom down and then add, I think I'm going to glue a little bit over on the back and then the sides around and that should give us a nice little pocket. And let's start by gluing this down better. Because we don't want it pulling up when we have stuff in the pocket. All right, now we're gonna take this. We're going to just wrap a very small amount of it around so that this has a nice finished edge. And I'm realizing I should do this a little lower because I'm not going to want to sew through the lumpiness of the finished edge on the um, ribbon. So, there we go. And we're gonna cut off some fabric at the corner. And glue it down. Is a very bad corner. <laughs> Let's try and do a better job on that corner. I'm gonna need to add some more glue to that corner. I'm gonna just give it a minute, let it dry, and see what we can do to get that a little bit better. What I really should do is I should be cutting the corner for mitering before I glue it down, but I keep forgetting to do that. So we'll just go with what we got. Okay, let's flip that over. And I know it's a little buckly now, but I will, um, We'll be sewing in a signature, so we'll probably have a part through there, and I'll be stitching down and along the sides, so that will solve that problem, or it should. I'm going to add a little bit more glue over here just to glue down our little frayed corner a little bit better. Ooh, that's sticking to me. Okay, so now we've got our inside and our outside cover, and they're going to go together like this. And I'm just going to glue them in the middle together and then sew them together. Oops, yeah. I have a little fabric tack in the middle. Pretty much just keep these two pieces together for when I take it to my sewing machine. So 
there's our inside cover and our outside cover and I'm gonna take this to my sewing machine and stitch all around it um, to make sure these are nice and secure and together um, and I'll come back when I'm done okay so we had some cracking because I uh, used antique book page and it was not happy about the spine so what I think I'm gonna do um, to salvage that. Now I know I mentioned I was just going to put some lace over, but I think I really want to reinforce these this area, especially since I've gotten even more cracking than originally happened. So what we're going to do is I've got ribbon. I have lots and lots of ribbon. So I am just going to attach ribbon over our cracking and in fact wrap it all the way around, which will help reinforce our the hinges here. <clears throat> on our cover. And so I'm gonna grab fabric track and hopefully it's gonna cooperate. So I'm gonna run some glue down the middle. My glue's gonna cooperate today. So I just ran glue down the center. I'm gonna attach the ribbon Try and get it straight-ish. Gonna flip over, wrap around the bottom bit of the, glue, the ribbon, and then take the ribbon all the way down the center on the inside. trim that off and what I'm actually going to do so that we have a nice finished edge down there I'm going to put a little glue on it fold it under and then add a little glue to just glue it down So there we've got a nice finished edge there. Now I'm just gonna take my glue and run some underneath the edges on both sides and on the inside and outside. So we've done that. We're gonna put some here and some here. And just press the ribbon down. And I'm gonna leave this alone and wait for the glue to dry before I fold it. And I'm gonna just do the same thing on this side as well. All right, so I'm just gonna set this aside to dry. And I'm gonna pull over our hexagon junk journal cover. And I also wanted to do something about the fact that I have unfinished edges all around. So what we're gonna do for this is pull out some more ribbon. Now this ribbon, I actually coffee dyed because it was a little too bright. Um, so I just used a little coffee dye to knock down the brightness of the ribbon. And I think what we're gonna do is start on the front side and run a little bit of glue part way down. And then run our ribbon along. Trying to keep it about even for front and back. And then keep going all the way down. Trim it 
trim off here. And then do the same across the bottom. Again, just double checking to make sure I've got enough to wrap around. And again, trim off at the end. Yeah, I went a little short over here, so we're gonna go a little bit high on the sides because we're gonna add ribbon again to the sides. this piece we're gonna just go up to there on and let's flip it over double check make sure we still have it about even all the way down and over here we don't need it to go all the way to the end, although it's now glued down there. So, okay, so we're just gonna trim that off. And then do this side. And need a little bit of glue over here. And I'm just going to go around on my corners and take a little bit off so that I'll hopefully wrap the corner without making a huge, having too much bulk. And now we will wrap it around. And for this, I'm going to put the glue along the top edge of the book and the edge of the ribbon. I think I'm just going to try going all the way down on that. And then we're just going to wrap it over. Probably should have used a slightly wider ribbon or adjusted this a little bit more so that there was a little bit more to wrap up. But that's okay. We're going to make it work. Do the top next. Pretty much just going to do the same thing. Apply glue, wrap it over, glue it down. I'm gonna glue that bit down. Let's hold it for a sec. Need to glue that bit down. Not wanting to stay. All right, and then we're gonna roll this section over. All 
All right, I'm just checking to see if there's any spots where it's coming up. And I'm just gonna add more glue. So there's that cover and I think what I am going to end up doing is putting some book corners on the corners to cover up any mess from the ribbon not being perfectly mitered on the corners so that will disguise the mess and reinforce that. So there's that cover. We've got this cover and this cover with a ribbon pocket. So I'm really happy with how that came out. I think my stitching is improving some. Um, so there's our soft cover, our waffle box cover, and our biscotti box cover. So this is gonna be the three covers and junk journals we are gonna be working on for the next few weeks. I will create a playlist of all the videos that go along with creating our trio of fall junk journals. But that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please do all the things that lets YouTube know you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave me a comment down below. Thanks for joining me and happy crafting.